hello guys welcome back to another Android tutorial today we are going to learn about job schedulers in Android the importance of job schedulers is now increased because from Android version 8.0 onwards Google limits the use of background services Google suggests developers to use job schedulers instead of a background service such as an Indian service to reduce battery drain so before going to create an Android example of job schedulers, you must have some theoretical concepts about job schedulers. So here I create a simple presentation. So from this presentation, you will get the basic concepts of job schedulers. Android job schedulers API is the better choice for scheduling background jobs for your application. It improves the battery life by performing similar jobs as badges in the background. It first become available in Android version 5.0 that means API level 21. It is the better alternative for alarm manager and sync adapters. So now we can learn how to use job schedulers in an Android application. So the first step, you have to create a service that extends job service. Job service is a class that extends the job service class. The system uses this job service class to perform your background job regardless whether your app active or not. You must override two methods in your job service class. First one is on start job. Second one is on stop job. Now we can consider these two methods separately. First one is on start job. This method is called by the system when all the job parameters are met and the time for the job execution arrived. You can place your job in this method. You must return a boolean from this method. If your job is very short and simple, then you can place it in this method and return false. If you return false, then the system assumes that your job is very simple and it finishes just before return the boolean false from the on start job method. Always keep in mind that the job service uses the main thread for its execution. Placing a long running task on your main thread leads your application to freeze and cause the application not responding error dialog to appear. If your job is a long running task like downloading a file and perform the database sync, then don't put that job directly in the on start job method because the on start job method is called in the main thread. For a long running task, you have to use a separate background thread or async task. If you place your job in a separate thread, then you have to return true from the on start job method. If the return type is true, the system assumes that your job is still running in a separate thread. Once you finish your job, you must call the job finished to method to inform the system that the job is finished. If you forget to call the job finished to method, then the system assumes that your job is still running and that may lead to memory leakage and processor bandwidth wastage and finally cause quick battery drain. You have to call the job finished method from your job thread. Here is a simple example. So here is an example of on start job method. So here I use an async task to perform the background job. So here is the on post execute method of async task. So after finishing the doing background method, the result is available within the on post execute method. So here I call the job finished to method on the background thread. So for this method, you have to pass two parameters. For the job finished to method, you have to pass two parameters. First one is the job parameters and second one is a boolean value return true if you want to reschedule the same job again otherwise you can return false 
and here is the second method on start on stop job method system call this method if your background job is cancelled before being finished this happens if any of your job parameters are no longer available for example Wi-Fi cuts off while downloading a large file you can clear the unfinished job resources from this method you have to return true from this method if you want to reschedule the same job again otherwise you can return false here is a simple example so here is an on stop job method and here i call the cancel method of the async task and return false so here i return false because i don't want to reschedule the job again now the second step the second step you have to add the job service to the android manifesto.xml so here is an example here is the job service class name and here you have to add a special permission permission bind job service now here is the third step now we can specify the job parameters job parameters means job conditions you can specify the job conditions or parameters using a job info object create a job info dot builder object the job info dot builder constructor needs two parameters first one is the job id and second one is a component name of the job service here is an example so first here we create a component name of the job service and here we create a job info builder object so for the job info builder constructor you have to pass two parameter first one is the job id and second one is the job service component name now you can specify the job parameters or conditions using the job info builder object the job parameters will provide better control over your job job schedulers provide some methods to specify your job conditions so here 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 some uh, job parameters or job condition here is an example first one is builder dot set periodic here i pass some milliseconds as parameter so this job will execute periodically every three seconds here is another example set minimum latency and you have to specify it in milliseconds your job will not start until the stated number of milliseconds have passed do not use the set periodic and set minimum latency methods together if you use it together it may lead to an exception and here is another method set override deadline even if your job conditions are not met your job will start when the stated time has passed and here the same thing again don't use set periodic and set override deadline methods together here is another example set persistent and here you have to pass a boolean value if you pass true your job will exist even after the device reboot and here is another important method set the required network type and you have to pass the network type as parameter and here you can use this one network type any network type metered that means cellular network network type unmetered that means wi-fi the default value is network type none if your job need a network connection then you must specify this parameter you can use any that means your job use on metered or unmetered network if you want to use your job only the cellular network then you have to pass the metered if you want to use your job if you want to execute your job only on wi-fi then you can specify the job type as unmetered so now we specify the job service and we specify the parameters for the job after specifying your job service and job parameters now you can schedule the job to schedule a job first create an object of job scheduler now get the job info object by calling the build method on the job info builder object to schedule the job call the schedule method on the job scheduler object and pass the job info object as parameter 
here is an example so first here we create a component name of the job service so by using that component name and job id we create an object of job info builder so by using the builder object here we specify the job conditions or parameters so here i specify set periodic into 5000 milliseconds that means this job will be executed in every 5 seconds and here i specify set the required network type into network type any that means my job need a network connection now here i use another parameter set persistent into true that means this job will be ex exit this job will be exist even after a system reboot so after specifying the job parameters uh, we can schedule the job to schedule the job first thing we have to get an object of job scheduler so here i get an object of job scheduler by calling this method get system service now we need to get an object of job info from the job info builder object so you have to call the builder method on the builder object so after getting the job info object you can schedule it by calling the schedule method on the job scheduler object so this is how we use job schedulers in android i hope you get the basic concepts of how to use job schedulers in android don't worry uh, you will get a clear idea in the from the next episode in the next episode we are going to create a simple example of how to use job schedulers in android thank you for watching see you in the next episode